Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today we are back. We are working on our project on uh, pulling power with engines, and I think we got, uh, we got an answer to our age-old question today. All right, so I have 5088 and 5072 consisted together. We're running about 22 scale miles per hour. I have 14 cars currently hooked up. And I gotta tell you, these, uh, these cars from scale trains are, are no joke. Metal wheels or not, uh, they are heavy and they are hard to pull. Uh, they, they're not super smooth like some of the micro trains I have with plastic wheels. Um, and to be honest with you, we're pulling a pretty nasty grade with these so because of the length of the train not only am i pulling two and a half on my loop but we are continuing uphill at about another almost three percent grade up to my uh my bridge over there on the left and so far haven't stalled out got the 14 cars going around and we're maintaining speed pretty well so that's kind of what we're looking for. So this next time it comes around, I'm going to slap 15 and 16 on there just to see if we can get, you know, that extra, if we add one car up to eight, what's that? Another 16% power running two engines. That will pretty well prove that you get more out of running engines in consist than you do running them one at a time. So going to be a little bit shorter video this week, but uh, verify our speed coming through here. Pretty stable at 22 again. And we are going to go ahead and hook up two more cars. I will have the entirety of my BNSF covered hoppers in this consist being pulled by two engines up almost a 3% grade in totality so there we are hooking up 16 cars we're going to see if it's going to pull the hill it's going to struggle but we're going to find out Let's zoom back here and take a look at those i can hear there's already a little bit of slippage and we're just about stalled out We're still moving though. And how about that? We just crest the hill for the final little bit of, uh, of the grade. And sure enough, once that engine gets over the hill, we got more than enough power to keep going. So we will try attaching one more and see what happens. This might be the one that uh, strung the camel's back. We will give her a try here. Also, uh, we will go ahead and jump over, once we see if this will actually pull the hill or not, maintain our speed, hopefully, fingers crossed. Perfect 22, we're holding speed super well, even with more cars, that's good. That is a testament to the uh, back EMF. And as we come around here, I am going to put number 17 on here, and we're probably going to stall out this time, but let's give her a try. And there we are. And we're definitely slowing down. The engines are coming to the top of the 2.5% grade, only to continue up into the slightly steeper 2.9, I think is actually what it ends up being. Right about here, there's another little bit of an increase and it is the, the hardest part of my layout to pull. Generally because I have a bunch of train back here on the, uh, yeah, we might be, oh, we're still creeping forward. And the engine rounded the top of the hill there, and we pulled through. So we're going to add one more this time and see if this ends up being it. We will be up to 18 cars. 
We'll see if she can do it. Now, if this was a Helix, I don't think there would be any way this would actually pull this. Um, you'd run out of power first or second loop there. But uh, just to give an idea, we have substantially increased the amount of pulling power that one engine was capable of pulling on this hill. So if I can get this, uh, this next car on here, each engine would be pulling the equivalent of nine and both of them pretty well stalled out single-handedly at seven. So this pretty well confirms that uh, when the two engines are working together, it acts kind of like a traction control system, kind of like I was talking about. As one starts to slip, the other one picks up a little bit and kind of helps, helps pull you through that situation. But um, so far, I have pretty much been right that the... Uh, Two engines is definitely better than the sum of its parts. And here comes... Uh-oh. Struggling to get that one on the track there. Carefully get it on there without messing up the system too much. We're slowed down again. And we are approaching the steep part here. We will see if the engines will actually make the run. I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the downhill. Should this make it around this time, we are going to check the downhill speed on this just to see if the TCSs are actually maintaining speed downhill pretty well. I would expect a little bit of speed up. There is a lot of weight behind these engines. They are... Definitely both spinning out at this point, but they're still making progress. One more car I'm not even going to try, but we've got 18 in this entire consist, and that is pretty impressive. We are just rounding the top of the hill there. We're going to start picking up speed again, and we're going to check the downhill speed of this train. We're going to see how well that back EMF maintains our speed. Twenty two mile an hour downhill. So point proven there. The uh, oops, that was my mistake. I left the uh, rear railer in the way. The TCS definitely, definitely maintain downhill speed better. We have way more weight behind these two cars. As a matter of fact, if I take these off, just pulling this train around by hand, you can feel the weight on it. So, all right, so I just want to wrap this up a little bit. Uh, keep in mind, last week, if you didn't watch the video, go back and take a look at that. We verified NCE Digitrax and the TCS decoders, what their actual polling power was. At speed, there wasn't a whole lot of difference. It was between six or seven cars. However, downhill, I'd noticed speed increases on both the Digitrax and the NCE. The NCE was almost 10 scale miles per hour coming downhill with six cars behind it. We verified a couple things on the TCS today that really made me happy about actually making the switch to these. This has pretty well proven this idea that I've had for a while. And I don't know why this actually happens. This is strictly a theory, but I've been given some flack in the past about this because I didn't have any proof that this was actually the case. But when you put two engines or more in consist, the... The sum is greater than the parts, in my opinion. And I kind of proved that today. It it's, acts like traction control, to the best of my knowledge. As one engine starts to slip, the other one will gain a little bit of traction. Vice versa, they kind of help and push and pull one another to keep you know, wheels from spinning out. Because once your wheels start to spin, metal on metal, there, there is no comeback at that point. However, if you get a little bump from the engine behind you or a little tug from the engine in front of you who hasn't lost any of that tractive effort yet, you're, you're going to pick that back up, maybe lose a, a little bit of difference. And if your wheels are spinning, you know, the actual wheel speed to ground speed might come up and catch back up and you can gain a little more friction there. Um, so 
Each of these engines could pull seven cars last week. We started off with 14 cars in this consist. It could easily make the loop. We jumped to 16, so eight cars per engine. It struggled. Mind you, it did make it around the loop, and we added two more for a total of 18 cars in this consist, and we can barely make it around. Now, the one thing that I have to say, the little area in the back here ends up being about a 2.9, 3% little hump that you got to go through. As the engines come up, they really struggle through that. That's a pretty tough little area for any engine I got going through there. So once they crest the top of that, they basically got all their pulling power back and they're ready to rock and roll. The one thing that I have to say about these TCS coming up the flat here, and mind you, there is a little bit of a grade on this flat just coming up just from the way the floor is in my house. Steady 22 scale miles per hour every time around. And coming down the hill, we verified it at 22 scale miles per hour. On the NCE with six cars behind those engines, we had, it was eight or nine scale mile per hour gain. And the Digitrax was like five or six. As you put more weight behind those engines, that speed drastically increases. I have a huge amount of weight running behind these engines right now, and the speed was spot on. And I do not like that runaway engine situation coming down a hill. It causes a lot of derailing in my um, past experiences. These, uh, these scale train cars are really good. However, I do have one gray one that is a little bit finicky and it will derail if it is moving just a little bit too fast. But uh, with a little bit of speed, I think we've proven that the TCS decoders have a little bit more pulling power and they have excellent downhill performance. The one thing I wanna test going into next week, uh, if I get my ESU system back from uh, the ESU support guys, um, I plan on sending uh, one of them into Broadway for them to test with their engines. Uh, I'm talking with them about uh, having them, uh, you know, pressure test some of their engines on my system just to see what happens. So my uh, command station is going to go off to them as soon as I get it back from ESU. And when they finish their testing, hopefully they will find something. Um, but I will be getting my cab control back at that point. I will hook it back up into the system. It should be an easy install real quick like. Uh, hopefully I won't have any decoder failures hooking that one back up into the system because it was the first one I had issues with. But uh, again, fingers crossed, hopefully ESU will find something. If not, um, we'll just go from there. But it will allow me to do fine uh, speed step control. The Unfortunately, the DCS-51 with the little rotary knob, it's really difficult to uh, do fine speed control. So I think what I want to do next week, should I get that back, is I am going to go back through my initial test. I'm gonna put the NCE, the Digitrax, and the TCS decoder back in 5088. I am going to set all of their low and medium settings to exactly the same thing. And we are going to set it at, you know, one or two speed steps just so we don't have any cogging of the engines. You know, we're, we're running smoothly. Kind of get a figure for speed, maybe three or four scale miles per hour. And I want to see at slow speed if the uh, back EMF really makes a difference in pulling power. Because I think that's probably where we're going to see it. A little bit of momentum behind the engines. There's there's less of a difference, but um, it was a good first test. I think it's just a little bit flawed for testing the back EMF control. But uh, anyway, should that uh, happen, I will see you next week to do that. If not, well, I might have a uh, lockdown project to work on. So I will see you then. Have a good rest of your week. Bye now.